Decision 2018 coverage is presented by ITE. Explore your world. And we have just completed the first track of questions here at the One Guam gubernatorial debate. We are with our analysts. We've got Ron McNinch. He is a former member of the Statehood Task Force. We have Adrian Cruz. He is a member of the Free Association Task Force and a doctor. And we have uh, Dr. Michael Bavanco, of course, from the Independence uh, Task Force. And here, right off uh, the bat, Doc, you know, independence uh, just a few years ago was kind of a dirty word. And uh, you're seeing at this debate, uh, you know, this forum tonight, people are coming out and they're not scared to talk about uh, the possibilities of uh, independence. You know, Senator uh, Frank Ogden, of course, uh, I guess this is his coming out party. He's saying that he's supporting independence as a task force. What do you uh, think about the kind of the normalization of what used to be a fringe status choice? For me, it really shows that our community's come a long way. A lot of people used to be afraid to get into this discussion. You go back 10 years, 20 years, candidates would be afraid to even say they were in favor of decolonization. But it's part of our island kind of coming around, starting to believe in ourselves, starting to, to look at the situation and think, you know what, maybe we could get something better out of this. Maybe we should get a better deal. And, you know, independence is just one of those ways that you can get a better deal. What are your thoughts so far on uh, what you heard tonight? Well, I'm very optimistic. Um, like Chris said, for the first time ever in Guam's political rhetoric, people were throwing out the idea of being able to take a stand on our own, whether that means in an agreement with the United States or even on our own independently. And so I think it shows that it's high time for us to have a, 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 a vote like this. And I think that it's going to play a key role in how we're going to position ourselves in the world in the future in dealing with the United States and our regional partners. Ron, your initial thoughts? Sure. If we're talking like independence, it's independence from what? That's the question. And so I think the only person who really addressed it today was Governor Guterres. He's basically, he basically, I believe, said, do you want your passport or you don't want your passport? And that's the question. And so while everyone can say anything they want, the reality is all the voters are going to have to deal with the question. And all the voters are going to vote for governor. And that's what the issue is. Do you think, though, that the people here tonight are able to, um, I don't know, I just feel like it wasn't necessarily a debate, right? right it right, seemed right. like it was a, a forum. Yeah. So you weren't able to see a contrast or a difference um, between you know, the candidates. You know, Bria, a lot of the, uh, well, a few of the candidates are really using this as an opportunity uh, to talk about their accomplishments, which right. I felt had nothing to do with the line of questioning. Uh, Dr. Bavakwa, you know, and... That was kind of the start where you had, uh, you know, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio uh, come out and say, this is what we've done. I mean, his uh, opening uh, statement kind of sounded like something from the great debate. But then as uh, the questioning went on, they kind of, you know, uh, got more in the lane. So that this is a historic debate here to have a, a main, you know, island wide debate where the candidates talk about just this issue. Usually this is like a question towards the end that people don't care about. So this is very exciting. But you can see that a lot of the candidates are cautious. They're not quite sure how to talk about it. So they're kind of bringing out their usual sort of statements. And um, that, you know, to me, that's kind of unfortunate because this is your chance. This is the one issue where you get to inspire everybody and say, this is what I want for the island. This is what we should believe in. Let's look to the future. Let's look to ourselves. And a lot of the candidates aren't ready to do that yet. They're still cautious. You know, uh, Adrian, I got to ask you, uh, uh, former Senator Lulia Guerrero, uh, kind of waffling a little bit on uh, what uh, status choice uh, she supports. I know that going into this uh, debate, talking with some of her supporters, she's leaning more towards uh, free association. Was that kind of the gist that you got of, uh, out of her comments? Well, we have to also remember that this is the first gubernatorial debate that we're having of the season. And so a lot of them are just trying to get their message across to those people who haven't sort of made up their mind. So, of course, you're going to expect them to try to uh, broaden the spectrum of what they talk about. But, you know, she is also the only candidate in one of the questions that said that she supports Mariana's reunification. And that that's something to think of. All the other candidates kind of shied away, gave this sort of... Uh, uh, Micronesian Island Fair warm-hearted uh, uh, response that we're going to have a, a one Micronesia, but what does that really mean? She's the only one who actually put forth uh, a concrete idea. Um, 
And so, I don't know, we're going to have to see in the second half of this debate. If, I think they're really just trying to feel each other out. And I think that's when the uh, Spurs are really going to come out. Like any good cockfight, they're always going to they're gonna butt heads first and, and test each other out before it really starts getting uh, more exciting. Your thoughts? Well, in general, the question is, what are they saying that's going to get most of the voters' support behind them? And a lot of the things that are being said really aren't doing that. A lot of the things that are being said tonight really aren't articulating a message that can get a majority of people to vote for them. None of them have said this really at this point, at least in the first half. And so the question is, are they going to be able to connect with people or not? And are you going to be able to include people or do people feel excluded? And once you start excluding people, all kinds of really dynamic political things start happening. You know, I want to take it back to the beginning of the forum. Uh, the uh, opening remarks from UOG President Dr. Underwood, I mean, when it comes to self-determination, uh, Chamorro writes, he is one of the OGs. Right. And to have him uh, come out, I mean, he's retiring from a university uh, next month. To have him come out and, and give what I felt was one of the best speeches that I've ever heard him give, I mean, that, that was his moment of shine up there. And he kind of uh, chastised the candidates, you know what I mean? He, he, really set the tone, I think, and said, hey, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are going to try and pander, but don't forget what this issue is uh, is really about, you know what I mean? It's about the Chamorro right of uh, self-determination. Uh, so how'd it feel for, for you guys to see an iconic uh, Chamorro rights, a character like Dr. Underwood, kind of kicking uh, this thing off, and, and knowing that in the past, what he's run, he's really taken uh, what was then a, a real radical position uh, when it came to decolonization. Oh, I... I think it was good for him to set the tone like that because I think, you know, for many of the candidates and their supporters, they they were coming in here thinking that it's just like any other forum. It's, you know, you don't got to take it that big a deal. I mean, you saw that when uh, Carl Gutierrez mentioned we should negotiate for independence, his, his side of the room didn't even cheer because they were so caught off guard by that. Um, and so, but it's good that he's reminding them because even if the candidates know, maybe their supporters don't know, but this is the one issue that connects to all the other issues. And so this is the one issue that really proves how serious you are as a candidate, because it's, it's kind of hard to pander. You know, you can always say, and I love the kids. Yeah, we got to be safe. We, I love the ocean. I love this. But this is the one where if you're faking it, it's it, it's pretty obvious you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I really want to get... Think, though, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I know he came out with those strong, the right. strong speech right. at the beginning, but I just feel like I didn't really hear them answering the questions right, right. or their positions on self-determination or the three status options. I mean, do you agree or don't agree? Well, Robert, of course, is being who Robert always is. So he, he, he's sticking to how he's always been. And of course, he's on his way out. And so he has nothing less to lose. And so he really wanted to challenge these people. Um, but at the risk of that challenge? Well, for the first time, I don't think we've ever heard this in political rhetoric before. For the first time, we've actually heard all the candidates say that it is the Chamorro people who are the inheritors of this right to do that. So th that's pretty historic to actually have a, a person running for office to say that. And so in a way, it's surprising. And in a way, it, I think, again, it shows our political maturity. Right. And uh, we're going to see how this is going to play out. You know, I really want to take this to uh, one of the biggest, uh, you know, parts of uh, the self-determination debate, which is the defense of uh, Guam in the event um, that we do uh, change our political status. I think that um, the candidates really handled this question well, and it was um, it was kind of a dispelling of that myth that a change in Guam's political status uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be left defenseless by ourselves in the middle of the ocean. Uh, Adrian, what were your thoughts on that? And then, of course, I would really like to get uh, Dr. Maninch's thoughts. Well, they answered pretty safely. Um, and I'm sure they were all informed. Uh, I know a couple of the political candidates actually asked members of the commission to come and help educate them on that. But it's true. Uh, Guam's reason for colonization is because of our strategic location and so it's not something that's going to disappear overnight um, it's something that's going to have to be negotiated with whatever status we're going to choose and so uh, they all answered pretty fairly um, yeah two quick things one about the defense but the other one is everyone's assuming there's just going to be five candidates in this race this is may any enterprising candidate can jump in 
and say all these questions and answers are BS and I'm the real solution. So never forget that. This is still early. On the defense issue, as if the United States is going to leave because there's some kind of vote, there's two major bases here. Guam's a possession of the United States, it's property of the United States. Nothing changes. I mean, that's the reality. I'm just talking the reality is nothing will change anything defense-wise, at least for Guam, because the United States doesn't have to do anything, even though there's some kind of vote or symbolic effort. That's the reality. You know, in fact, the United States could turn Guam into a parking lot if it wanted to. That's the political reality. And that's and, and a lot of people need to realize that. You know, is this as if is as if what happens to our defense? Well, it depends on whether the U.S. wants to have bases here or not. That's the reality. You kind of sound like Carl Gutierrez because I know I heard him say they own us. <laughs> Did we all hear that? <laughs> yeah, we heard that. And you know, uh, Uncle Carl, uh, he's he's still the same. I mean, he hasn't changed. Every election uh, he runs, it's the same old rhetoric. I did this. I did that. That was my idea. I'm the true Megan Lahey. And you know, you gotta admire his swagger. Uh, but you know, uh, Dr. Vivaco, I really want to, and you know what uh, Dr. Gunich said here, is uh, people always say that uh, Chamorros and people in Guam want a closer relationship with the United States, but I haven't really heard that on the stage tonight from uh, many of the candidates. It's, uh, it's, what I found is that the more people learn about it, the, the, the less true that is, necessarily. Because a lot of times, so people oftentimes will choose statehood because they don't really know much about any of the options. So they just assume, well, the US is the best, so the statehood must be the best. But even in my own Guam history classes, the more you educate people about the options, the more they kind of move towards the middle. And you know, that's really what you want. You don't want people to choose statehood because they don't understand what statehood means. You don't want people to choose independence because they don't understand what independence means. What you really want is that as, as many people as possible n understand the basics so that if they say, you know, Guau Sopopoti Free Association or independence or whatever, they, they have some, some understanding of it. And they're not just saying, you know what, I like statehood because we'll get more welfare. Or I like independence because then we'll, you know, we'll save our culture or something like that. Those, those, those things are part of it, but you want them to, to understand the basics involved. Okay, because this is uh, supposed to be also uh, an education, uh, educational initiative, take us through then the status options um, and the basics of it, starting with independence. Status options for dummies. <laughs> and so independence is, so to dispel some myths about independence, it doesn't mean you break ties with the United States. You could, and in fact, you look at the United States, you look at, it has a really close relationship with its former colonizer. You look around the world, and so what independence can be, there's two different ways, main ways it can be. It can be a, a maturing of a relationship with the United States. It can also be Guam going in a completely different direction, taking advantage of its place here in Asia to capitalize on our location, our connection to Asian economies and Asian cultures, to really develop an economy that suits our needs and protects the culture and the environment here. So there's two main ways. Independence can look very similar to what we have now, or it could look very different depending on how we want to protect our identity and our interests here. Free association. Well, free association is a sovereign nation in a treaty relationship with another sovereign nation. So it would be the country of Guam with a treaty with the United States. You know, we have to understand that our people already have a hundred year plus relationship with the United States and many people are conflicted about that. And so this is just solidifying our place in relationship with the United States as equal partners rather than in a subservient position. And statehood. Well, actually I prefer the real term, which is integration, which is either you, Guam is with the United States or it's not with the United States. Really it's a two choice option. Either we're with the US or not with the US. And that, I think statehood really simply means Guam is going to be with the U.S. All right, we are going to uh, go back to the stage for the second track of questions. You are watching the One Guam gubernatorial debate. Decision 2018 coverage is presented by ITNE. Explore your world.